With the Mario movie crossing over a billion dollars at the box office, many people are calling for a film adaption for Crash Bandicoot, including Toys for Bob themselves. So, could a Crash Bandicoot movie work? Let's talk about it. What's up guys, Canadian Gaia here, and back with a brand new kind of video. So the Mario movie is, and I'm saying this now, going to be the most impactful video game adapture film ever, period. No questions asked. While the Sonic movie may have beaten Mario to the punch in terms of a really well done video game movie, the Mario movie has showed that Sonic was not just a sheer fluke. Mario crossing a billion dollars shows that video game adaptions can not only be good, but extremely profitable. Mario is a trailblazer in the video game industry, and when Mario does something, the industry follows and watches very closely. From his original 3D platforming games like Super Mario 64, to his world famous kart racers, and even his party games. So, Mario making over a billion dollars? Yeah, there's going to be some people that are going to be taking some notes. Historically, Crash has kind of been the anti-Mario mascot, making fun jabs at the mustache plumber and Nintendo. This was all part of his identity right when the marketing started for Crash Bandicoot all the way back during his PS1 days. Many people have actually compared Crash to being PlayStation's Mario, having mainline platforming games, racing games, and uh, mixed bag party games. But nowadays, Crash Bandicoot is back and he's doing very, very well. He came back strong with arguably one of, if not the most profitable remastered trilogy of all time, followed by a brand new sequel and with a new multiplayer game around the corner with Crash Team Rumble, there seems to be no stopping Crash Bandicoot. But now that the Mario movie has crossed the threshold of $1 billion, companies are going to take notice, I guarantee you, including Crash Bandicoot's current team of developers, Toys for Bob. Here is what they had to say. With the Plumber Boy's incredible cinematic run, we think it's time for Crash's theatrical debut. What say you, Sony Animation? Now, I'm gonna say this, this is a very bold move, as not only saying, but tagging on social media can lead to a lot of confusion and false hype and hope, but nonetheless, Toys for Bob is calling for Sony to make a movie that focuses on our orange marsupial hero. But the question is, would it work? Would a Crash Bandicoot movie actually work? There's a lot of factors that go into making a good video game movie, but not all video game movies should be treated the exact same. Some games are made for pure fun. Others have a deep story to tell. Sadly, some movie adaptions completely ignore the source material and just create something that is vaguely reminiscent of the original media. An example of this is Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. But some actually go too deep for the casual audience and it's very confusing for them. Like the Warcraft movie. Which actually, can I um, say something about this? I loved the Warcraft movie, but I am a Warcraft nerd. They started the Warcraft movie at the end of book nine, Rise of the Horde. There were eight other books before the modified events of the Warcraft movie, and they mentioned almost none of them or any information that they contained, so no wonder the casual audience didn't understand it. Anyway, let's get back to the video. The point is you can't treat every single video game adaption the exact same way, but looking at Sonic, Mario, and even Detective Pikachu, I think there's a reoccurring pattern that we can use as a foundational guideline for a Crash Bandicoot movie. See, the Sonic and Mario movies are origin stories for characters whose origins are not really clearly defined, but those origins have been adjusted to stories that are actually pretty typical but fit within the character's personality. Sonic is a one-of-a-kind stranger in a strange land with superpowers, trying to adjust human life and live in peace and hide. Mario is, again, 
a stranger in the strange land who's an underdog and overcomes the odds to save his loved ones. These are very basic story tropes that we have seen hundreds of times in hundreds of different pieces of media. But that doesn't matter because the first thing the creators did was they followed the rules of the world. They took typical tried and true story prompts that we all know and placed them in a video game world with tightly knit rules with characters that are very similar to their actual video game counterparts. They follow the game's original rules and personalities to a T. Now, Detective Pikachu is actually a fantastic study for this concept because when the movie was following the rules of the Pokemon world, it was great. But as soon as they did break the rules of the Pokemon world for the movie, that's where the movie's biggest flaws lied. So what are the rules of a Crash Bandicoot movie world? Or what are the rules in general for Crash? Well, let's start with the obvious. Crash was a bandicoot in Australia, where the natural order of life was protected by Aku Aku, a spirit that resided on the islands that uses a mask to communicate with its denizens. Cortex, a rejected criminal scientist, makes a lab in the wild of Australia on the Insanity Isles so that he can do his unethical testing on the animals that lived there. He eventually takes Crash Bandicoot, puts him through the Evolvo Ray, turns him to how you see him today, and tries to make him a mindless slave to Cortex with the Cortex Vortex. Of course, this fails, causing Crash to basically have his brain just absolutely blended. Crash then escapes the lab, but quickly realizes he needs to go back to save his girlfriend Tana that Cortex is holding hostage. Aku Aku helps Crash out on his adventures and grants him portions of power through Aku Aku crates. Crash has an undying love for Wumpa Fruit, definitely is more of a simpler character, but the biggest hurdle that we have to cross is he can't talk. So the plot points that have to happen in this so-called movie is Crash is created by Cortex, he escapes, makes his way back to the lab and defeats him. That has to be the basic order of events. The question is, how do you translate that into a compelling script? Yes, you could make this into a script, but how do you make a compelling good script? And not just a good script, while also following the rules of the world. There's two things a good movie needs, purpose and character development. Now we have the purpose figured out. He has to fight Cortex because he has his girlfriend and he wants to get her back. That's simple. But development is where Crash, not just as a character, but as a franchise, hits a brick wall. Crash Bandicoot, as a character, doesn't really develop. He doesn't start off as one thing and then become something else. He's a static character. But that's not really his fault. See. He's not designed with a heavy story as the forefront driving force. You don't play Crash Bandicoot for the lore and story. Even in the modern Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time, Crash literally starts the game as lazy and sleepy. He's literally sleeping at the start, but then he goes on an adventure, meets new friends, and when he returns, he is ex exactly the same. So in order to make a good movie, you have to give him some kind of development. This is what they did for both Mario and Sonic, as neither really have compelling development that reflects well on the big screen in their original games. But this is where we hit our second problem. Crash just doesn't talk. Now this isn't the same issue that Mario has, because Mario talks very little in his games, but just by playing we know that he can talk. He says, wahoo, let's -a go, and doing all of his different impressions, we know that he can talk. Crash, genuinely, even in conversation, just doesn't talk. And no, we're not taking the end of Crash Bandicoot 4, that's, that's a fun bit. Crash can say a very few basic words, and that's it. The problem with basically non-verbal characters is that showing development for them is all based on their sounds and facial expressions. Typically, non-verbal characters aren't alone on screen for too, too long, as audiences don't want to watch someone not speak for a long period of time. 
especially kids. So that means Crash needs to have someone else in the scene with him almost at all times, speaking for him and reacting to what he is doing. I'm not saying that there can't be scenes where Crash is alone, but those scenes can't be particularly long. Now, I have been working on an entire outline. I scripted almost an entire synopsis on how a Crash movie could be developed and it follows the rules of the world, has only slight adjustments to some of the story, and I think it would reflect well as a movie overall. And while I actually do think it's pretty decent, there comes a point where you have to come to the realization that maybe some franchises are just not viable for the big screen. Is a Crash movie impossible? No, I think it's very possible, but I think there's another medium that Crash would just fit a lot better in and have a lot more success overall and that's an animated series. See, Crash Bandicoot is quite literally inspired by Looney Tunes. While Looney Tunes has made films in the past, none of them have really made a big splash, so to speak. Looney Tunes, when you think about it, is known for their episodic nature. You don't need to watch previous episodes to know what's going on. Each episode is self-contained, and honestly, I think the exact same method would work for Crash. The straightforward idea is that each season of the Crash cartoon would be simple. Crash, Coco, and other guests and denizens are hanging out on Insanity Isles, doing various activities and having self-contained stories. Meanwhile, Cortex is constantly interrupting and trying to destroy Crash in each episode through various methods and means. Think of something akin to Wild E, Coyote, and Rogue Runner with Team Rocket from Pokemon. I feel like the groundwork here would really allow Crash as a franchise to just exist in its natural way without having to change or bend the original rules to fit to a film. However, if you want to hear about my synopsis and pitch for a Crash Bandicoot movie on the big screen, let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for all your Crash Bandicoot content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video and or live stream. Bye bye!